Hello, this is Ethan with Helix VR. Today I'll be reviewing Soul Keeper VR. I'm playing the 1.2 version, so it's had some fixes implemented since its unfortunate launch. Soul Keeper VR is a dark fantasy RPG. You experience the story, collect items either to proceed or for combat, and try to clear the areas. Being an RPG, the focus of this game is very much on the story and the world. That said, not much of the environment seems to be interactive, which is a shame. There's a checkpoint system so you can load previous checkpoints automatically if you die. The game isn't too easy, so you will likely be making use of these occasionally if you play the game. For combat in this game you have three options. You have a staff for powerful magic, a hand for regular magic, and a sword for melee. The staff is the best of these in my opinion. You pick up consumable items as you play which can be put into sockets on your staff. With this you can throw around some pretty powerful magic, but of course it's limited to what items you currently have. You generally just point the staff and shoot. I enjoyed the system of using consumable items for it quite a lot. Regular magic is cast by motion controls. I personally wasn't too impressed at the controls for this. You draw an arrow to decide on the type of magic. It doesn't always seem to register what I'd like to do and it doesn't really feel intuitive at all. I may be spoiled in this regard as I played the wizards which pretty much nailed it. Melee with the sword is unremarkable. There's no knockback or feeling that you're doing more with than waving a sword through the enemy. This does seem to be an issue of a lot of VR games really though. Helm systems did do locomotion pretty well, I have to say. They've included trackpad and teleports. They've fixed their previous issues with trackpad, and given an option to decouple movement from the HMD. You can even change the angle that you're looking at with a trackpad. Graphically, the game is brilliant. Unfortunately, while improvements have been made in performance, it's still not there. Playing at medium on a GTX 1080, I'm still experiencing frame drops. It's playable, but doesn't really give the best experience. The music fits the setting well. The voice acting is okay for the most part. Unfortunately, the game does have a few negative points, aside from the well-known performance issues. I've come across a couple of outright bugs. I managed to physically walk through a locked door, then I was unable to walk out. I teleported through one too. I've also come across at least a couple of times where voices were repeating over themselves. There's at least one checkpoint which I passed about five times before it actually activated too. Death traps seem quite sudden, as in going a certain way meant death with no obvious way to escape, or you're just suddenly surprised with something that came out the wall and killed you. Enemies don't respond if you hit them far away enough. The same if you send fireballs flying straight past them. These really reduce the amount of fun to be had with the game. To finish off this review, my overall impression is that the game has a lot of potential, but I can't really recommend it yet, particularly at the high price point. To be fair to Helm Systems though, I can see they're hard at work at the game, and they have been releasing fixes fairly quickly and listening to feedback. It feels like the release was just too early, even for early access. Once again, this was Ethan from Helix VR. If you'd like to see more content like this, please remember to like and subscribe.